So today I'm joined by my TA Serenity for this engineering graphics video. Usually one of the first things you're going to learn in this type of class is orthographic projection and you would probably do exercises about finding missing lines. So instead of creating drawings from scratch, you're going to take drawings that are already started and you need to complete them. For the first couple examples, you'll be given an isometric view, which makes it a little bit easier to figure out what's missing. But I'm also going to work through examples where you're not provided the isometric view and you have to figure out what's missing just based on the drawings themselves. I'm going to try to move through these quickly. But if you think I moved through too fast and you have a question about one of them, leave a comment down below. Make sure you include which number goes with your drawing. And I'll do my best to answer your question down in the comments. So for this one, the top view looks correct. The perspective drawn from the front looks correct. But when viewing from the right, there should be two distinct boxes visible. So to finish this drawing, we need to draw that one horizontal line across the right hand view. And it's going to be drawn at the same height as that horizontal line on the front view. Looking at this drawing, it looks like the top and front are probably correct. We need to edit the right view, but let's check that. So all the surfaces visible from the top look like they're accounted for. And all of the surfaces visible from the front look like they're accounted for. But the right hand view should have two distinct sections, one sort of J shaped and then the other blue rectangle as well. So to finish this right hand view, I draw one horizontal and one vertical red line on the right side. And to get the exact distances and locations correct, I match those two green heights from the front to the right view, as well as those two red distances from the top view to the right view which also both have to match and so these two red lines in the right hand view match those two red edges on the isometric view number three the top view looks correct those three blue rectangles and the right side view looks correct there's the red visible rectangle the purple surface is also facing towards the right hand side but it's hidden behind that red surface which is the reason for the hidden lines that mark its boundaries so to finish this drawing the front view just needs those two vertical lines to separate the three distinct rectangular surfaces that would each be visible and in particular the height of those two red lines match the red lines that i put on the isometric drawing now so for number four, the top surface looks good. The view from the right looks good, where the green visible surface is in front, and then the purple surface is hidden, which is why it's represented by the dashed line. And so to finish this drawing, draw two vertical lines to divide this front face into those three vertical rectangles. And with this slightly different color scheme, those two red heights match those two red edges on the isometric view. Now we've got a small step up in difficulty since the isometric view is not provided anymore. And my strategy for these drawings is always going to be to compare front to top by just sweeping from left to right and ensuring that all features match between front and top. Then I'm going to compare front to right by sweeping from bottom up to ensure again that all features match from the front to the right hand view. And then lastly I'm going to compare top to right across the miter line by sweeping diagonally to ensure again all features match from the top view to the right view. So comparing front to top, every distinct feature looks like it has a partner on the other view. But comparing front to right, it looks like there's some features missing because these two middle arrows correspond to a feature on the front view and there's nothing there on the right. So keeping in mind that the right view is to the right of the front view, this helps show that that bottom edge should be a solid line on the right hand view because it's on the right hand side. It's not obstructed. It would be visible. But in order to get to this upper corner, I do have to cross through part of the drawing to get to it. So it would be a hidden line. And note that the way I've drawn this dashed line starts with a dash, just as a quick explanation as to how to draw a dashed line, you need to start and end your dashed line with the dash actually making contact with the adjacent surface. You can't start a dashed line just in the middle of the air with the space between the gaps because that makes it ambiguous exactly where the dashed line starts and stops. And so third, I said I wanted to check top view to right view to make sure all the features match. And in this case, just just the edges. So yeah, they match. Comparing top to front, looks like all the features have something they compare to, that's good. Comparing front to right, again, looks like everything matches up. And now comparing top to right, again, all features seem like they match up against something. So in this scenario, my strategy failed in that just sweeping from left to right, top to bottom, it didn't actually show that anything is missing, but 
you can probably guess that's probably not the case. So that method of sweeping back and forth, top to bottom, will really help you identify things that are missing if there's only missing on one drawing. So since it didn't work, in this case, it probably means that there's lines missing on multiple drawings. And for these types of drawings, a lot of time the best way to figure out what's missing on multiple drawings is gonna to be to see if you can create an isometric sketch to work from that. So looking at the top view, the main question that you need to ask yourself is, is this blue square a cutout? So this is sort of like a square donut? Or is this a block sitting on top of a larger, smaller block? From the front right side views, we can see that it, it doesn't appear to be a donut shape. It looks like this block actually is sitting on top. It's an extrusion upwards. And if I give myself a really rough sketch here of a small block sitting on top of a larger block. This makes it a little bit easier to see what's missing. And on the isometric view, you can see that purple and red edge is also gonna go all the way across. Those purple and red lines correspond to the purple and red line on the top view. Here on number seven, the top and front views seem like there's no features standing out that are not accounted for. Comparing the top to the right view across the miter line also shows there's just the two edges and they seem to match up as well. But comparing front to right, it does seem like there's things present on the front view that are missing on the right hand view. Right, is this a square donut or is it an extrusion like on the last one? From the top view, those hidden lines show that this square hole is in fact a hole that sinks through. And that means that on the right hand view, there should be hidden lines. And since the top hand view shows that the hole goes all the way through, then these hidden lines on the right hand view will also go all the way through. Okay, so comparing the top to the front view, there's nothing obviously missing. And comparing the front to the right view, there's nothing obviously missing. And even comparing top to right, there's nothing obviously missing. So this one's gonna take a little bit more brain power than some of the other problems. So the last time we saw this situation happen where there was nothing obviously that didn't match up, it was because there were lines missing on multiple drawings that matched up with each other. This case is gonna be different. There's still only lines missing on one drawing, but the reason that it didn't show up is because there's essentially a feature behind a feature. In order to help better understand this problem, it helps to make a rough isometric sketch. So looking so far at the top and front view, we can see that the general structure of this shape seems to be one big rectangle in the back, and one smaller rectangular block in front. So one big rectangle in the back, one small rectangle in front. This isometric view matches both the top and front view as currently shown. Those green rectangles on top match the green rectangles on the isometric. Now the two green shapes that are front facing both match from the orthographic view to the isometric. But now looking from the right hand side, there should be two distinct rectangular surfaces visible, but our right hand view is just one large blob. And so what was missing was this red edge, which is essentially behind the purple edge. And so the reason the initial strategy didn't show that this line was missing was because it was essentially below the yellow line, right? Since that yellow line was already there, it didn't show that this line beneath it was obviously missing but when looking at the isometric view, that does help catch the mistake. All right, on number nine, comparing the top to front, it looks like there is something missing in the middle of the piece. There's not necessarily anything missing between front and right. These both seem to line up okay. But when comparing top to right across the miter line, again, it shows that there's a feature on the right-hand side that is not captured on the top view. So the answer is going to be somewhere on these yellow lines, but not all the way across. So these green arrows and blue arrows are gonna show the dimensions of the feature to be drawn on the top view. And the main question now is whether it should be visible or hidden. And we look at that red square and ask, is this a hole? That is, is it cut into the material or is it an extrusion that is sticking out of the material? From the dashed lines on the right side view, you can see that it is a hole, but a hole that does not go all the way through the part based on that blue arrow length it only goes partway, about halfway into the piece. So the final answer here is that it's gonna be dashed lines because it's hidden, because when viewed from the top down, it's gonna be beneath the solid top surface. And the lengths of the two hidden lines are gonna match based on those green and blue arrows. And remember, when drawing hidden lines, your dashed line should always start with a dash on the solid objects. And also when going around a corner, your dashed line should have the two solid dashes meet at the corner as an L corner shape. You would not want to draw a dashed line like this blue example here because it makes it harder to see exactly whether the line goes all the way up to the edge. 
It also makes it very difficult to find where the corner is located if that's in the gap part of the dash. Okay, very few vertical lines on top and front, so it doesn't seem like there's anything obviously missing there. There are some features on the right-hand view that are not represented on front, so there probably are some missing lines on the front view. Comparing top to right, it seems like all the features do match up against something, so nothing obviously missing between those two. So from the top view, we can see that these two edges do go all the way across the drawing, so the lines we make on the front view are going to go all the way across. But the question is whether they should be hidden or visible. So when looking at the right-hand projection, front is on the left-hand side of right. So the front view is looking in the direction of these purple arrows. And that's gonna make it clear that this bottom line is in the front of the right-hand view, since there's nothing blocking it. The purple arrow hits it unobstructed. But the upper purple arrow, this one is obstructed. It does have to cross through part of the drawing before getting to that back hidden corner. And so this upper edge will be hidden. Nothing obviously missing from top to front. Comparing top to right, nothing obviously missing there. But we do see one piece missing comparing front view to right view. There's an edge here that should be accounted for that is not. This is gonna be drawn as a solid visible red line because the right hand view is to the right of the front view. So when looking at front from the right, this corner is on the front, unobstructed. So it would be visible. It's not hidden behind anything when viewing front view from the right side. Comparing top to front, it looks like the peak of this house here is missing, so there's probably something missing on the top view. Comparing front to right, there's nothing obviously missing. All three features, top, middle, and bottom, all seem to match up. And across the miter line, comparing all of the horizontal features on the top view to all the vertical features on the right-hand view, they all seem to match up. So again, maybe nothing missing comparing those two to each other. So since the top view looks down on the front view, and this hidden feature is at the very top of the front view. There's nothing obstructing it when looking from top down, so it would be a visible line all the way across the top. One last reminder for these missing line drawings. You wanna compare the top view and front view, and all of the vertical lines on your top and front view should match each view. When comparing your front and right side views, all of their horizontal features should match between the front and right side views. And lastly, comparing across the miter line, all of the horizontal features on your top view should have a partner vertical feature on the right-hand view. So horizontal on top should match vertical on right. If I went too fast over any of these drawings, please leave a comment down below with your question and which number it went to, and I'll do my best to answer your question down in the comments. If this video helped you learn about finding missing lines on orthographic projections and you think it would help other students as well, please hit the thumbs up so it'll appear higher in search to make it easier for other students to find. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.